Hello and welcome to Study History with Mr P and today I'm going to look at education in Elizabethan England. So education became increasingly important in Elizabethan England. It was based on preparing you for the life that you were expected to lead and was usually focused on practical skills and could include some basic literacy. Now only a small percentage of children, most, <coughs> mostly boys, went to school. Few girls received any formal education. Humanists believe learning was important in its own right, and Protestants believe people should be able to read the Bible in their own language, which in turn encouraged people to become literate. A, ba a basic education became more important as business and trade developed. So first of all, the nobility. The children of the nobility learned a variety of subjects such as languages, history, philosophy, government and theology. This also included girls who also learned the skills expected of upper class women, such as music, dancing, needlework, horse riding and archery. They were tutored at home, but from about the age of seven, boys and girls were taught separately. The children of noble families often went to another noble household to finish their education. Then there were the middle in sort and grammar schools. So grammar schools were founded in the 1560s, there were about 43 of them, and in the 1570s another 30. There were private schools set up for boys, mostly from well-off families in towns. Girls could not attend and were educated at home. Fees varied and some lower class boys went with their fees paid by people who had left money in their wills. The school year was long. Holidays were only at Christmas and Easter and the days were about 10 hours. Learning focused on Latin and ancient classical historians and philosophers. There was also a great deal of discipline and punishment, so teachers kept discipline in the classroom. Monitors reported on misbehaviour outside of the classroom, and punishments included being kept in a break, exclusion from school, being on report, corporal punishment, and being expelled. We then have merchants and craftsmen, so some grammar schools ran an alternative curriculum for their children, focused on more practical academic subjects. Skilled craftsmen and yeomen were mostly uh, most education for their children was through apprenticeships and going to school would depend on whether the family could manage the business or home without them. There was also something known as petty schools, which were set up and run in the teacher's home where boys could learn reading, writing and basic arithmetic. And boys could go to grammar school after this. Schools for girls were known as dame schools. Um, children, of, girls of all classes did not often go to school and education was focused on the home. Labourers and poor children basically had no formal school-based education and instead learned what they needed from their families whilst also working on the land or in the home. It was estimated that 30% of men and 10% of women were literate by the end of Elizabeth's reign. It seemed little would change for girls but it had a little bit at least for boys where it, where it was felt that a little education could help you to get a better job. There was also education in universities. There were two universities, Oxford and Cambridge, and you would start there at about the age of 14 or 15. 